things and tasks that I do as a virtual executive assistant here at Athena Executive Assistant. If you're interested in looking for work as a virtual executive assistant at curious ka ano bang ginagawa, then this story time is for you, so keep watching. For the past month, ang focus ko na tasks, task for my client is to plan an personal event for my client. List of the things na ginawa ko to plan this event for my client is 1. Look for a venue, look for a caterer, purchase wine bottles, purchase beers, purchase cupcakes, and to book a rental vendor. Rental, ibig sabihin niya yung mga tables and chairs, yan. So, it's kind of one month in the making yung buong event na yun. Or, siguro a little more than a month, around two months or one and a half months. I'll go into detail of each of the tasks na ginawa ko sa kanila on for this event for on the succeeding um, videos or posts. So basically, planning this event actually consists of a lot of research. And then, since virtual natin siya ginagawa at since kasi virtual executive assistants tayo, how do you think na na-pull off natin yon? Marami kang gagawin in terms of communication, yung mga sending out of emails to all of the suppliers, inquiring, and even if it's virtual, meron naman tayong way to call these vendors. So, madalas talaga tinatawagan ko sa sila to make sure na malinaw lahat ng communication namin. But every time after I make a call sa mga vendors na to, I put in the details of our calls sa emails, sa email, and then I send it out to them. Ang importante kasi when planning an event, you have to make sure na lahat ng communication mo with your vendors are black and white. So to cut the story short, na search ko lahat ng vendors, na buko lahat ng vendors, na bili ko lahat ng kailangan bilen, and today is the day, right now, right this very moment, ng yayari yung party ng client ko, and everything is flawless. I think may isang vendor lang na nalit, but overall, I think they are having fun. They messaged me earlier saying to thank you, to thank me for coordinating the whole event. And I'm just waiting for hopefully one of them to send me photos just to make sure that everything went well. Pero so far naman, so good. Even the vendors thanked me on how detailed I was in providing them with all of the information needed for them to be able to execute everything on the day itself. So if you feel like kayang kaya mo yung trabaho na yun, just click the link in it. I'm in my bio and apply. I'm going to show you an example video of how I do my research as a virtual executive assistant for my client. This is one of the recent tasks that I did for my client is to look for an airport transfer that will bring him to his airport hotel to a location. This is somewhere in Europe. So let's just say this is in Italy. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use Google. And then I will search for the specific word, which is airport transfers in Italy. The first searches, I will check them all out. I will right click and open a link in new tab. This is because I don't want this page to disappear. So I click on all of them. And then I will check on each one by one. Now, since this is an airport transfer, I will be paying for this in advance. So I want to make sure that these are trusted vendors. I will open another tab. We'll go and search Necto transfers.com review. I am looking for this one, Trust Pilot. Going to also check out Chip Advisor. Then it looks like they have very good reviews out of 2,200 reviews. And then I just try to read through most of the reviews. And then, of course, I also check TripAdvisor. But with TripAdvisor, I just have to make sure that this is the correct company that they're reviewing. See, it says Connect to Tours. So it's not the Connecto transfers that I'm looking at. So I just exit. Do the same thing for Transfero and Airport Taxi Transfers. Once I choose which one has the good reviews, I book one for my client and that's it.
It's important to note that when you are a virtual executive assistant, you can't just rely highly on what you see on Google. You have to always double check. Even if they look, even if they have an amazing looking website, you always have to double check the reviews of each of the company that you are going to book for your client, especially if your client has no experience with this specific vendor. Always have to make sure to double check. And you already saw how we do that, so you can do it on your end. As a virtual executive assistant, one of the tasks that I do, um, especially when it comes to event management, is creating a event website for my client na pwedeng may RSVP capability. There are a lot of website builder websites out there, pero ito yung pinaka-favorite ko sa lahat. Well, ito lang yung ginagamit ko. I always use here Wix, Wix website, Wix.com. So, dyan, gamit na gamit yan sa akin. Um, nagagawa naman yung lahat ng mga features na kailangan ko. Tapos parang drag and drop lang yung pag-create ng website, copy and paste lang, ganun. Parang nagpa-powerpoint ka lang or paint. So, if you want to play around with this website, just go to Wix.com, create an account, and it's very, very easy. One of the tasks that you are going to do as a virtual executive assistant is inbox management. But what will you do if you don't have access to your client's inbox? That's where our resourcefulness as virtual executive assistants come in. You need to take the first step. Be assertive. Be proactive. Show your executive presence by reaching out to your client and asking them if they would like to copy you in the emails that would need your attention in the future. You have to understand that some clients are not comfortable providing you access to their inbox because there are a lot of important information that they do not trust you yet. So what you have to do is take lead, take charge, tell them that this is how they can include you in their inbox. They can copy you in emails that they think you can help them with forward you some emails that they think that you can help them with. And once you have built that trust, once they realize what a big help you are in terms of inbox management, then they might think of already providing you with full access to their inbox in the near future. As virtual executive assistants, don't be afraid of your client because these people or your clients are hiring you because they know what you are capable of doing. But of course, in any type of relationship, you have to build that trust. So if you feel like you have what it takes to become a virtual executive assistant, all you have to do is click the link in my bio and apply here at Athena. Calendar management alert, guys. So it's already the end of daylight savings sa America. Ayan, makikita nyo, PST, yan yung time, Pacific Standard Time sa States, California area yan, and of course, our PH time. So nagtapos na po ang kanilang daylight saving, meaning move tayo ng one hour. So dati, ang trabaho, let's say, ito, MJW, dati, nasa 9am yan ginagawa. But since nag-move na tayo to, or natapos na ang daylight savings, 10am na siya. If you are using Google Calendar and your um, primary time zone is PST, automatic mag-move yan. Saan nyo makikita yung primary and secondary time zone? Just go to the settings of your Google Calendar settings. And yan, makikita ninyo yung display secondary and primary. So, if primary ang PSD, it will automatically change. Goodbye! I am a virtual executive assistant at Tuesday pa lang, sobrang dami ko nang nagawa. As in, it's been a crazy two days. If you wanna know kung ano na yung mga nagawa ko for the past few days since yesterday, <laughs> um, just check out the video before this. And then come back to this video. So, if napanood mo na yun, alam mong marami na akong nagawa. At eto na ang video dahil marami pa akong gagawin. So, these are the things that I'm going to do for the rest of the week. I am going to create a newsletter for my client's company. Kasi we send out newsletters every quarter. So, I create the newsletters for my client. And then, I am going to also, it's the time of the year, for me to create the... 
social media analytics report for my client's LinkedIn page since I manage their LinkedIn page. I'm not a social media manager, ha? Natutulang talaga ako on my own. I ask help from other friends na nasa social, na social media managers. Um, and I, I just do my client's LinkedIn. After that, I'm gonna start creating new content for my clients. So I'm gonna create a content calendar and I will also design all the photos um, that will be put in that content calendar. I also need to do a lot of online shopping for my clients. So, mag-grocery tayo, mamimili tayo ng regalo, mamimili tayo ng mga bike, yung mga ganyan. Kailangan natin mag-grocery. And mag-shopping. And then, kailangan ko rin gumawa ng mga birthday card greetings at anniversary card greetings na ipapadala ng client ko for their family and friends. And then, kailangan kong gumawa ng scheduled emails reminding them that it's the birthday of their family in the next few weeks. Do it, they need to purchase a gift? And then, another set of scheduled emails reminding them na, oh, birthday ni Ganato today, here is a greeting card you can send to them and then for this week every thursday i attend my clients meeting and do minutes of the meeting so gagawin ko din yon exciting yung week na to kasi this is the first time that i'm going to do the minutes of the meeting without my clients guidance so kailangan magpakita ng gilas tayo at bonggang bonggang minutes of the meeting yung gagawin natin and then, yung mga usual na ginagawa ko, na everyday kong ginagawa, I just check my cal client's calendar, I make sure na updated lahat, and then check emails, kanan. And then also, one-on-one -on -one meeting namin ng client ko this week. And then, I have a lot of other things that I do also for Athena, na hindi for my client. So come join us and work with us! As a virtual executive assistant, you will not be able to do everything that your client would like you to do, especially if it involves doing that thing in person. Most of our clients as virtual assistants are in the US, in the UK, or in Australia. So as much as we want to do everything for our client, there are just really sometimes tasks that we can't do for them because it involves in-person actions or activities. So what I do as an executive assistant in with the approval of my client is I hire taskers via TaskRabbit. So all you have to do is go online and search for TaskRabbit or TaskRabbit.com and it will lead you to this website. And then you can browse or search what type of task or errand you need to do from a tasker. Now, this post is not sponsored, but this is just really the my go-to website or tool as a virtual executive assistant. That you as a virtual executive assistant, most common tasks that we do for our client is travel management. Travel management includes booking flights, hotels, restaurants, and creating itinerary for our client. So, for example, your client sends you an email and asks you to book a flight for them. Before looking for flights for your client, it is very important to ask them their preferences. Number one, you should ask them, of course, where they are going, what time they prefer their flights to be. Are they going with someone, a family member, a friend? What seats they prefer, what cabin they prefer, whether they want to be economy first class or business class. Ask them if they have airline accounts. Ask them also what airline they prefer and what airline they do not want. Ask them if they have frequent flyers accounts so maybe you can use their points. Once you already have all those information, you can definitely start your research and look for the flights for your client. Make sure to provide at least five to three recommendations for your client. And from the recommendations that you sent your client, make sure that you have a top one recommendation that you're going to highlight and wait for your client to choose and then book that flight. And that's how we quickly do travel management, specifically booking flights as virtual executive assistants. As a virtual executive assistant, paano ba nagbubook ng accommodation or ng hotel at saka ng mga restaurants for your client na nasa Amerika? Well, kadalasan naman nasa Amerika or kahit sa parte ng bansa, but for this specific video sa Amerika. 
Para sa restaurants, ang unang-unan niya talagang pupuntahan at wala naman ang iba is yung Yelp, yelp.com. So, kunyari, restaurant, search nyo lang restaurant, tapos kung anong state yung client niyo And then, lalabas na ngayon lahat ng mga restaurants na available. Meron din yung map sa gilid. So, if you can pinpoint the exact address of your client, that's better. Makikita niyo kung ano yung mga restaurants na malapit sa address niya. Now, for example, we want to try this out, the Soul Food Lounge. So, kiklik niyo lang yon Sometimes, you can go directly dun sa website ni client. or sometimes dito pa lang sa Yelp, pwede ka na mag-meet ng reservation. So, aalamin mo lang kung anong date ng gusto niya, anong oras niya, and then you can find the table. Or you can also go directly dun sa website ng client or pwede nyo ring tawagan directly para mas mabilis. Pero sa Amerika, kadalasan talaga, you have to go through their website. Dito, dito nyo na yan if it's available here. So just find the table and then lalabas na lahat ng mga available times na ganyan. Kasi kiklik nyo lang kung anong oras yung gusto ninyo and then ayan na, ilalagay mo lang yung name ng client mo. Now, I highly advise, lagay mo yung name ng client mo, mobile number. number mo or ng client mo, email mo para sa iyo dumidiretso yung confirmation and then isisend mo na lang sa client mo. Some restaurants will require you to input yung credit card nila. Kapag sinabing input credit card, ibig sabihin yan meron yung cancellation fee. So, if um, nag-recommend pa lang tayo ng restaurant sa clients natin, as much as possible, wag, nat- wag tayong pipili ng restaurant na um, naghihingi ng credit card number. Pero if sinabi ng client na dito niya talaga gustong kumain, then input niya lang yung credit card ng client ninyo. Um, paano isi-share sa inyo ng client mo yung credit card? Tell them to use yung last pass na um, password sharing app. So, ganun lang naman kasimple. I always just use Yelp or search sa Google for restaurant recommendations. Now, take note lang kapag sinabi ni client, can you recommend maybe three restaurants around the area? Bago nyo ibigay yung list ng recommendations niyo sa client niyo, make sure na nakapag-book na kayo ng table for your client for the specific date and time na gusto nila. Bakit? Kasi ang pangit mag-recommend. Tapos sabihin ni client na, okay, sige, after a few days, sasabihin niya, o oh, gusto ko dito. And then after a few days, hindi na available yung table. So, magagalit lang si client. So, better to reserve muna the table and then send the recommendation. Once na may napili na si client, i-cancel mo na lang lahat ng iba na na reserve mo. If you have questions about the process, just comment it. About naman sa pag-book ng hotels, then just follow me and I'll create a next video for that. Thanks! Isa sa mga pinaka-common tasks na ginagawa ko as a virtual executive assistant is nagbubuk ako ng mga restaurant for my client. Ang mga Amerikano, culture nila yan, mahilig sila kumain sa mga restaurant kaya sobrang daming mga restaurant at saka mga fast food chains sa Amerika. So, answering this question, saan daw ako naghahanap ng mga restaurants na pwede kong mabuk for my client? I use three search engines either than Google, kasi given naman na yung Google eh. But these are three search engines that I use to search for restaurants in the US. Ang pinaka-go-to ko is ito, Yelp. Yan, this is a very important. Hindi lang restaurant actually makikita mo dito, iba't ibang klaseng businesses or services nandito. Pero Yelp is the most accurate, tas may mga reviews din sila doon, photos, lahat ng mga oras nila. You can even make reservations directly from Yelp. But this is what I use. The next search engine naman that I use also, at ito rin yung ginagamit ko, lalo na kapag out of the country si client, it's TripAdvisor. So yan, pwede mo rin siyang gamitin pag kunyari nasa ibang bansa yung client mo, and naghanap ka rin ng restaurants for your clients sa ibang bansa, so hindi lang siya para sa US. But TripAdvisor is very nice, maganda din yung mga reviews dito, pati lahat ng information that you need for from a restaurant, makikita mo rin dito sa TripAdvisor. The next search engine naman that I use is Google Maps. So, this is very powerful. Hindi lang talaga siya pang mapa. Ginagamit ko to specifically kapag gusto ng client ko sa isang specific location lang or let's say nasa isang hotel siya tapos gusto niya malapit lang sa hotels niya yung mga restaurant or malapit lang sa bahay niya yung restaurant na hahanapin ko for them for that specific weekend, I use Google Maps. And then from here, nakalink na din lahat ng information sometimes sa Google Maps. Sometimes nakalink na din siya doon sa TripAdvisor page ng restaurant na yon. But 
Google Maps also is a very powerful search engine if you like to search for restaurants. So yun, hindi naman komplikado yung paghanap ng restaurant sa Amerika. It's just really yung tatlong yun lang talaga ang kadalasan kong ginagamit. Ang pinaka-pinakamadala sa lahat, siguro more than 50% of the time, ang lagi kong ginagamit is Yelp. And then if it's location-based yung hinahanap ko, si Google Maps naman. And then kapag nasa ibang bansa or outside the US, yung restaurant na hinahanap ko, TripAdvisor yung ginagamit ko. So if interested ka maging virtual executive assistant just like me, you can apply here at Athena Executive Assistant. All you have to do is just click the link in my bio and start your application process. Good luck! So guys, as an executive virtual assistant, I do a lot of travel management for my client. And here are the websites I go to when I look for hotel and airport transfers for my client whenever they travel. First site is Transfero. This is very good. They have very good reviews and quick customer service. Very affordable also. Next one is Connect to Transfers. They are also very, very good reviews and very good customer service. And last one, it's this very um, bougie. <laughs> it's uh, Black Lane. So this is like um, high-end service for my clients and for me to find out if they are really good um, suppliers i always go to trustpilot.com to check their legitimacy and if they are very good suppliers so check that out one of the tasks that I do as an executive virtual assistant for my us-based client is ito nagbubuka ko ng mga restaurants hotels flights yung ganyan so Thank you for this question. At least matuturuan ko kayo kung ano bang ginagawa ng isang executive virtual assistant. Listen up kasi malay mo dumaan to sa assessment ng Athena um, dahil nga situational na yung mga assessment ng Athena, di ba? So, ang question niya, <clears throat> kapag nagbubuk daw ba ng restaurant, sa pangalan ko ba nilalagay yung reservation or sa pangalan ng client mismo? Nilalagay ko siya sa pangalan ng, pangalan ng client mismo. That's because, syempre sila naman yung nakareserve, hindi naman ako. Um, and then, ang ginagamit ko naman, since wala akong access sa email ng client ko, pangalan ng client ko, pero email ko yung ginagamit ko para sa akin pumapasok lahat ng confirmation email. Kasi kapag nilagay ko yung email ng client ko, tapos wala naman akong access sa, sa email niya, hindi ko malalaman kung na-confirm ba yung reservation or hindi. So, I always send it to my email. Tapos, fino-forward ko na lang sa client ko. Or sometimes, ang ginagawa ko, inaano ko yung print, print view yung email, tapos masasave ko siya as PDF, and then i-attach ko yun sa calendar ni client for that specific reservation. Para kapag pumunta si client ko doon, tapos sinabi, ay, wala kong reservation, papakita niya yung confirmation email. Never pa naman nangyari yun. Pero I always do that just in case. Now, Sa US naman kasi, ang madalas na ginagamit natin kapag nagre-reserve tayo ng restaurant is yung mga third-party reservation platforms. Nandyan yung Open Table, Resi, Seven Rooms, uh, may isa pa. Um, pero yung pinakasikat sa kanila is Open Table at saka Resi. Kapag magre-reserve ka or gagawa ka ng account sa Open Table or Resi, pupunta ka dun sa account features. Na try ko maglagay ng picture kung sino sila. Basta sa account features ng Resi, tas kailangan mag-apply ka for... Parang business account. mag apply ka for business account para makapaggawa ka ng multiple reservations sa iba't ibang klaseng restaurants on the same day. So, I always do multiple reservations sometimes kapag kunyari sinabi lang ni client, may hanapan mo ako ng restaurant sa ganitong lugar. So, bibigyan ko siya ng options. Bago ko kasi binibigay sa kanya yung options na yon, I make sure na nakakapag-reserve muna ako ng table doon. Kasi kapag hindi ako nakapag-reserve ng table, tapos binigay ko sa kanya yung option, and then magre-reply siya sa akin after two days. Tapos yung gusto, pa niya, yung gusto niya, hindi na, puno na. So, anong sense? Magagalit lang siya sa akin. So, I make sure to reserve first. So, sometimes I reserve multiple mu different restaurants in one day. So, ganun. And then, yun. I hope I answered your questions. Ang haba na itong usapan na to, but three minutes lang tayo. If you want to learn more, follow me on my YT channel or follow me here on TikTok. Thank you! In the US, may penalty ba kapag nagka-cancel ka ng restaurant reservation? Especially kapag executive virtual assistant katulad ko, I have a US-based client and I always make reservations sa restaurant sa kanila. And then most of the time, ang ginagawa ko kasi I make multiple reservations sa iba't ibang klaseng restaurant on the same day. Tapos 
kapag nakapili na yung client ko, tsaka ako magka-cancel. Now, merong mga ibang restaurants, or lahat ng restaurants may cancellation fees. Merong ibang restaurant na for free yung cancellation. Yung mga ganong klaseng restaurant, when you make a reservation sa kanila, hindi mo kailangan mag-input ng credit card. Pero once na yung restaurant nag-ask ng credit card information for you to be able to book a table in advance, ibig sabihin meron silang amount corresponding sa cancellation fees nila. Pero, meron din kasi yung time frame. So, kunyari nakalagay sa cancellation fee, um, book uh, book this restaurant, input your credit card, you can cancel for free 24 hours prior to the date of reservation and time of reservation. So, kung mag-cancel ka ng two days before the reservation, for free yun, um, hindi man charge yung credit card mo. Pero kapag nag-cancel ka less than 24 hours to the reservation, then doon na papasok yung fee. Ang ginagawa ko kapag nagre-reserve ako ng multiple restaurants sa clients ko, kapag nag-ask ng credit card, hindi ko siya nire-reserve in advance. So, ang nire-reserve ko lang lahat in advance is yung mga walang cancellation fees. Kapag itong specific restaurant na to naghingi ng credit card, tapos alam kong maganda siya at gusto ng, magugustuhan ng client ko, ilalagay ko siya sa list of recommendations ko sa kanya Pero ilalagay ko doon na credit card is required. Meaning, kapag nag-decide si client, let's say, after two days, there is a possibility na baka hindi na namin makuha yung table doon sa restaurant na yon. Unless my client specifically said, sige, try and make a booking, input mo yung credit card ko, and then may cancellation clause naman siya. Ang importante lang lagi when making a reservation sa mga restaurant is you have to make sure alam mo or mababasa mo yung cancellation fee. When you do restaurant reservations under Resi Open Table 7 Rooms, meron, yep, malinaw na lagi doon. Even prior to finalizing yung reservation, ipapakita nila talaga sa inyo agad yung cancellation fee. Eh, yung, yung, sorry, yung cancellation clause. Um, dahil ayaw ng mga restaurant doon na nasusu sila if let's say, um, chinarjan ka ng cancellation fee, yung mga ganon. So they're always very transparent with their cancellation clause. So if you want to learn more how to become an executive virtual assistant, learn how I do things, click the link in, uh, click that and follow me for more. As a virtual executive assistant, how do I handle complicated tasks or tasks that I feel like I'm not going to finish within the deadline set by my client? Well, first and foremost, you must always look at the task and gauge whether you're going to be able to deliver it within the time given to you by your client. If your client didn't give you any deadlines, you always have to communicate with your client that you can finish this task in two hours, in a day, or in two days. It's important to always be clear with your client when you're going to deliver the output and not just leave your client hanging. Another important thing is that you have to provide your client regular updates on the progress of your task. If, for example, you hit a roadblock and you feel like you're not going to be able to deliver your task within the deadline you've set or your client have set, always communicate that with your client an hour or two hours before the deadline just to make sure that you set the expectations of your client. And you can also show your client that even if it will take you a little bit more time than what you originally planned, you're still doing your best to be able to provide your client with the correct output. Doing these simple acts for your client will show your client your professionalism and that they can rely on you for anything that they want you to do. So if you feel like you got what it takes to become a successful virtual executive assistant, then all you have to do is follow me here on TikTok, click the link in my bio, and start your application process in becoming a virtual executive assistant here in Athena.